visit with the person of high strangeness. Uh, you thought you saw me at my worst. Well, I lied. Um, oh, I feel ancient today, so I thought I'd try for Cleopatra, but it didn't quite make it. But then, uh, last week we went to uh, for presidential candidates, two things that uh, I'll actually need to be discussed too. And I'm real fortunate I have a young lady here, and your name is? Gina Nimai. Loud. Gina Nimai. Gina. And uh, I had the opportunity to go to a, to a local state court here not too long ago. And I noticed some things that uh, was kind of puzzling to me. So Gina here has helped me, uh, has offered to help us sort it out. Uh, I know some of you probably don't, not real comfortable with the whole thing, but um, hey, visit, of high, uh, visit with the person of high strangeness, it's my call, and this is what I decided to do today. Okay, now, how old are you now? I'm, I'm 27. Loud. 26. 26. Yep. And there came a point in your life when you ended up in the system. Yes. You have to speak loud. Yes. Uh -huh. You can look at me and okay. just... Yeah. We don't have a camera person today. Okay, so what happens is, did you get into the system because of a crime? Yes, I did. You did? Yes. Uh, was there a, a reason for the crime? Yes. Um, I had a boyfriend and he decided that he wanted to steal my, my food stamp card and it had on it um, cash and so he had um, st he uh, stole my cash mm -hmm. and then... Um, Loud. Sorry. Oh, yeah. So he um, he stole my my uh, cash from me. So then um, I decided that that I was going to go and bust out his windows, and I did. And then I got put in the system for that. Okay. Well, ladies, how many times have we not felt like busting out somebody's windows? Okay. So so in some ways it was really a small yes um, infraction. Yes, it was a very very small. No. Um, yes, it was a um, small infraction, but mm -hmm. um, I should have never done it, but he pissed me off, so I went ahead mm -hmm. and busted out his windows, and I was in the system for almost um, two and a half years. Almost two and a half years. Okay, so I'm going to stop here right here. Now, so the woman is in the system, and uh, so what was your original penalty for this crime you committed? Loud. Um, I had to go in and... Um, I went to jail for um, three days because um, I did it on the weekend, and then I had to um, go um, get a um, a um, evaluation to see um, how you know I guess um, how mad I was and angry, and anger management. Yes. Okay. And then um, after that, um, it went downhill. I mean, I um, yeah. I. Okay, we'll stop it right down because we're gonna take you down that hill. So put your brakes on, please. Um, okay, so now in the system, what was the penalty? What would have been the final outcome for your crime? If they had gotten it, okay, for instance, if you're a child and you do something, and I say, I'm going to whoop your butt, I'm supposed to do that right then and there. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not telling you to beat your children. But then if I say, okay, today is Monday, you did some bad, maybe I'll beat your butt on Thursday. Mm -hmm. You, you see where I'm going with that? Um, yes, I'm kind of I do, and um, that would be, I spent almost um, 210 days in jail um, total. 210 days in jail, but not originally? No. Okay. Three days. Okay, originally uh, three days, but okay. I know the federal system, and for those of you that have followed me with some of my prison shows, is you have guidelines. They are... Uh, guidelines sometimes they're very severe and sometimes they're not and so uh, according to the guideline like uh, this crime will get you two years in prison this one will get you three years in prison so what would have been the worst they could have sentenced you to for your crime three years three years that's what I wanted thank yes. you three years sorry okay so you did three days and they put you on probation mm -hmm. and can you tell me what happened after that? Then they put me on a probation, and I was supposed to go um, to my DB classes. Allowed. Yes. That would have been um, 
three days a week. I would have to go in there and see a, a counselor to, you know, tell me um, how not to be um, angry and upset and how to deal with, with, with my problems. But that didn't work out because then, um, because of me busting out his windows, I lost my home because I was not allowed to return um, um, back to my own home. Mm -hmm. So I lost my home. Then I got I started using drugs. Mm -hmm. is, is, so is that the reason you started using drugs? Yes. You also had children, huh? Yes. So you couldn't go home with your children? No. So um, I and my two children, we lived from um, house to house for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And um, then we were able to come back and live with um, my friend now that we were there for almost um, three years. Mm -hmm. And then it went I mean, even more downhill from there. Yeah. So please picture this. Uh, the you get convicted, you go to prison, you get convicted, um, because of that you lose your place to live, and you have two children, and uh, and here you are homeless, practically, right? Yes, and I and I still am. Okay. It's not my home. Yeah. So then, so now you are now using drugs. Okay. So take me to the next problem. So now, my next problem is, is I have, um, I have... I have on my record that um, it's a DV. It's called um, domestic violence. Mm -hmm. So, oh. um, so therefore, I'm not able to get um, no no um, housing because um, mm -hmm. they don't want I mean, anybody there. You know that has it on the record. Um, it's very very hard for me to get a job, mm -hmm. um, and I'm uh, I'm just, uh, stuck. You know, in the same uh, cycle over and over and over again because you know the system. I mean, it, I'm basically. I'm still, I mean, I'm, I am I'm still, I'm in the system, even though I'm not, you know, mm -hmm. currently I'm in the PO, you know, a system mm -hmm. and all that. PO standing for? Um, probation um, officer. Probation officer. Okay. Let's see now. Okay, so you, you are now considered a drug addict, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you're not comfortable with some of my questions, then, you know, it's okay, you can tell me that. Okay. Okay. So you are now a drug addict. Uh, did, did they offer you any kind of help? Um, no, they did not. Um, mm -hmm. I was in jail, and um, um, I did not go to um, one of my um, one of my meetings um, mm -hmm. for my um, class. So um, I got a um, probation probation a violation, which mm -hmm. made me go back to jail for um, thirty days. Now, when I was I mean, when I was in jail for thirty days. Um, that put me, you know, stuck in there, and mm -hmm. so I, um, I had um, no bail, no nothing. So what I did was, um, I went and I asked them. They have a counselor there, and I said, hey, you know, um, can I go and um, um, can I go into, I mean, um, go into a main patient, which is fine. But I, I still did my um, whole 30 days, and then I got out and I went into my inpatient, and that was um, also another process because that takes money and time. You have to, right. Next thing. So now you finally get help and you have to pay for it. Yes. Okay. So you have no job, you have no money, you're stuck with all the bills. What are you thinking by now? Well, I want to give up. I'm done. You know, I mean, mm. because um, the, when um, when I did uh, bust out his windows, um, he did uh, go to the uh, police station and he did tell them, yes, you know, um, I did uh, steal her check. And they said, no, you know, no, get out of here. You know, it's too bad, you know, that she will do her time. Even though he did admit that he stole it. Now, he could have done, um, you know, um, anything to me that he wanted, but he stole my kids' a food stamp card and, um, and my money to pay the rent. Mm -hmm. Now, he knew that if he did that, that I could not come back to my home. That's why I lost my home because I have now um, um, on him a, um, a lifetime a restraining order. A sure to okay, so so now okay, so now you are you are in in jail for probation violation. You come out. That you are now an addict. Yes. Okay, so so uh, the the other thing I found is they are urine urinary tests. So if for some reason you have a fallback, and you have a a dirty test. Mm -hmm. Then what happens? Then you go back into jail for another um, 30 days, and mm -hmm. that is on the first offense. On the second offense, it's going to be um, 60. On the, on the third offense, it's going to be 90. So, but okay, now, not only that, do they want you to come in there and check in with your PO three times a week? Mm -hmm. 
and you know, um, and they can, um, and they also have a surprise, you know, um, UAs. Not only that, but I still have to make it to my classes, um, four times a week, but no car. No car. And that was the key word. No and car. No bus line mm -hmm. to get anywhere. Now they know, one way or the other, and this goes for um, everybody. Not only me. Mm -hmm. We will fail one of those classes, which will screw you mm -hmm. if you if you miss your class, you're done. If you miss your PO, you're done. The PO stands for probation officer. Yeah, and, and what was the, the, uh, the what was the, 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 the test? What do you, what do you call it? That's it. That's called a UA. A that, UA, your analysis. Of the, your analysis. Yes. Your analysis. That's what that is. Okay. So so in other words, no matter which way you go, you're gonna fail something. Yes. Okay. And I, which um. Um, if we had enough uh, space in here, I, mean, I could bring I'm in here uh, 10 people that I know. I mean, for a fact that are now I'm clean. They are no more using. I mean, that is I mean that they are clean and still they are um, still running from the law because they could not make it um, in to go see their PO or their uh, correctional officer. Mm -hmm. I and mean, they they um, they make it so you will fail because um, if they don't have us, then they have no money. You have no money. Okay. Uh, hey. Miss E.T., that's right. Um, you can smoke if you like. Okay. Do you have a cigarette? Yeah. You can't jump up. You have to have them on you. No, I don't. We're not going to stop. Well, I, yeah, here. Look what I found. Thank you. Okay. So e either way you feel. Now, on a 1 to 10, when you went to jail, how many people are in, in jail for violations compared to actual crimes? Do you know? Loud. Okay, now um, this is going to be um, I, um, my um, um, honest, you know, of, of what I can tell you. Um, I went there on the weekend, so um, I don't have any clue because um, that that was the first time that um, that that I had, had been to jail. I mean, no, I'm in my life ever, and that was when I was uh, 25. You know, mm -hmm. um, so um, when I was there, um, you know, they were coming in for uh, some violations, but now. But then, um, when I went back, and I said, you know what, you know, um, you know, a screw, you know, um, my PO and the whole system, they, um, they will ship you off um, to a bank county because you are only allowed to stay in, um, you know, in the jails for uh, five to six days um, if you have a long term. Or so, they ship you somewhere else. Yes, yes, and they, they, <coughs> they uh, ship you um, over um, to um, uh, Yakima. Yeah. I heard. Yes, over to. Yakima because they have a contract with them, which again uh -huh. we are dealing money. with the state, and it will save them money to beat us. Yeah. And, and so once once a person is released, let's say from Yakima, now for for those of you that don't live here, um, come over here a little bit. I, there you go. Now she's in the picture about it. For those of you that don't live here, Yakima is across the mountain, about three hundred miles from here. So some of you have children, and we we're looking at the woman point here. Some of you have children. Let's say you are released from there. Um, how do you get home? Well, they um, when um, when you go there, they they shackle your feet together, uh -huh. and they put one around your waist and in your hands. Now, um, it is the most um, unsafest um, thing uh, possible because you are in this uh, box, you know, um, on this truck okay, in the back, and and then there is uh, two officers who sit in the front seat. Now, not only are we all, you know, a tied, you know, a somehow, or we are, you know, um, or, um, we are all tied together. Um, we are put, you know, like, like in this, you know, like a metal cage. So therefore, when we are going over the mountain, if we are to get to um, an accident, mm -hmm. those um, officers have no way to get us out. We will die. Yeah. That is the bottom line. Uh, well, and also in the summertime, it gets horrendously hot. Is the mountain? There is no um, air conditioning in there. Yeah, okay. So, so before it was all said and done, you did how much time? I did almost um, 220 days because I said, hey, um, I went, I'm in front of the judge myself. I had turned myself in for a warrant. And um, I said, hey, I said, you know what? I said, I give up. I said, just, you know, give me my maximum time, which um, in the beginning, it would have been uh, three years. Uh -huh. Now, this is, um, is um, also um, important, you know, to get out that, yes, I did have a choice to do, you know, uh, the right thing, but yeah. I had no vehicle, so I'm I screwed. I'm smoke a cigarette, too. This so is getting kind of... I screwed up. Okay. Uh, and then, and then, um, they, they will take you up in the jail along, um, with the men and the women, 
um, we are up front and then the men are in the back. And along the whole way there, you are being harassed, you know, uh, sexually, you know, uh, by the men, you know, saying not, 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 n not, um, physical, uh, you know, yeah. sexual assault, but, Roughly. you know, mentally. Yeah. And, um, then, then when you get released, they will take you uh, back to the jail and let you out. And, but, again, even though you are now, um, out of custody and you're done, mm -hmm. and now you get to go home, you are still shackled like, a, um, like, you know, like a criminal. And they, um, bring you back. Okay. Let's say the average taxpayer, is a, if we complain that uh, well, the jails are overcrowded and we don't have enough money for all these things. And the average taxpayer really believes that um, what they're paying for is utterly necessary. And like I said, then I found out that there's a lot of people in jail for stupid infractions. Well, what do you say to the average taxpayer? Um, I'm I'm not um too well, you know, with all the taxpayer stuff. But what they need to do is they need to um call or write to maybe um some kind of a Congress. Congress. And you know, let them know. Um, um, there was a woman um, who was in court, and she had picked one flower. Um, just speak loud, please. Okay, sorry. There was um she she had picked um one flower, and it was um um on the you know um grounds of the um of the um, state capitol. She did um, almost, I think, like um, 75 days in, um, in jail for that because she had a probation officer and then she was um, back in court and back in court. So they are uh, charging us for I mean, the most um, stupidest um, crimes, you know? I mean... Yeah. yeah. From what I understand is that um, the criminal has to pay a certain amount of court costs. Yes, um, right the, now... Mm -hmm. um, the restitution and a booking fee? Is, am I yes. right on the booking fee? Yes. That would be um, one hundred dollars, and that is at mm -hmm. um, Thurston County. You you pay one hundred dollars to have somebody come in there and put maybe a um, dollar or um, ten on your books. So you pay them to be able to have a snacks and and gel and munchies. Right. And then they take that money for your booking fees. Yes, they do, which okay. you do not ever get it back. Right. So in other words, uh, people get penalized. Uh, the, actually, the families get penalized. You know, by giving money. Now, in, I know in the federal system, it's like. Uh, if the family sends money and you owe a fine, they can take a certain percentage of that. Um, yes, but what family in essence pays your fine? Pays your fine. Um, they actually take um, all of it. Not um, they. They um, they will take um, every penny every that penny. that's coming in there until your fine is paid off. That um, that that you owe the courts now. Like like um, now, I owe um, Olympia courts over. Seven thousand oh. dollars. Okay, which means now that they can pull my license, which they will here maybe in about a month or two, because now it went to um, collections. Okay, so so let's get back to taxpayer for a moment. Okay, here the taxpayer things they're paying for jails and and upkeep and TVs and recreational areas for criminals. But what are they really paying for? Um, they are paying um for the they they. Are paying up for the guards, um, uh -huh. for them to drive a nice vehicles, um, for them to have, um, you know, um, pay vacations, uh, for their medical because um, when you go to jail and it is um, time to have <laughs> breakfast, this is the truth, and they can also call your viewers. You get one box of a cereal, a spoon, and um, one thing a small milk, and it is put in a bag and put you know next to your bed. I heard that. I actually experienced that um, with uh, with somebody I know in the Eden Cloud Jail to the point where I complained uh, to the Department of Corrections and I was sent this long letter saying that, uh, uh, you know, nutritional this and this and this and one day, um, the, I don't know for those of you that remember, Eden Cloud, downtown caught on fire, this was like in the mid 90s. So I went there on an unscheduled visit and, uh, and I saw these see-through trash bags and they had these little trays in there like that. And I said to the guard, uh, the ceiling had f almost fallen down. They left the people in the basement, by the way, while all these fires going on. There's water damage at the jail. And I said, I said to the guard, what's that? And he said, oh, those are the lunch trays. And, and I called a lady at the school board and asked her, could I see a lunch tray from the kindergarten children? And do you know they were smaller than kindergarten children? Yes. So in other words, you're hungry. Yes, you you are very very hungry, but um, 
um, that that um, will not ever change, no matter what you say or do or you call, because they um, they have it to where um, it is based on a on 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 a um, two thousand um, no, no calorie. No. Yes, that's the way they explained it. Yes. So so you get nothing more and nothing less. So what about diabetics and pregnant women? Um, that um, I had no clue on. No clue. Okay, well, I heard through the grapevine that pregnant women can request a snack because the last meal is at 5 in the afternoon and nothing else until 5 a.m. Oh, actually, um, Go ahead. Um, that, that would also be um, um, my mistake because my life now is um, hectic, so I, I did not uh, throw in that um, I was um, in jail um, when I was uh, pregnant. Oh, you was pregnant. Yes, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, and so um, they, they brought me in... Um, I believe it was um, two crackers, and you get um, two crackers, um, two per uh, package, and that was um, um, right after I had had supper. So I'm going to eat that, you know, as soon as possible because I'm um, still hungry. Yes, because um, we got fed at 4:30, um, um, I'm 8 a.m. in the morning, yeah. and then they come back <laughs> in for lunch when they, you know, when they want to. It, 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 it is not um, ever ever um, scheduled, and I think we eat lunch about at 12, and then we have dinner. Right after that, at 4:30, and then they come in there and they, they give you your toilet paper and your a toothpaste and um. But is that it to a napkin you have to buy yourself? No. Um, no. Okay. Yeah. Well, we got lucky on that one. Yes. And so uh, and that's it. And then um, um, they have a TV going um, all night long, and the jail is so hot. Okay, uh, this is a, uh -huh. a downtown Upper Lake Jail is so hot and so uh, smuggy, and there is not a window in sight. I mean, it's yeah, it's totally ridiculous. Um, I know that when I visit in the federal penitentiaries for more than a day or two, sometimes uh, I'm in the RV and I stop at different places. Um, you see yourself there, see? Yeah. Pretty. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the, if I go in there more than two or three, you know, real short visits, um, I come out and I have a TB check. Yes. Because TB is rampant in the jails, mm -hmm. from what I understand. And so, like I said, I, I do have a TB check. I know people, uh, well, in those jails you have glass and everything, but in the prisons, you know, they come in outsiders and insiders and babies and, yeah. So, so what what do you need from the community? You mean, um, like, me as in? Yeah, like, as an individual. Yeah. I, and I really appreciate you putting yourself on the line like this. Okay. Um, well, um, as of now, um, as we speak, um, I have, you know, um, pretty much uh, what I need. Um, I am now um, a full-time caregiver um, uh -huh. for this man, um, and they see his name. Uh, no, Gino. you don't have to give okay. a name. Yeah, we don't give names today. Okay. We're cheating. Look here. I'm <laughs> pretending to be Cleopatra. We're not giving names. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Um, so my um, goal um, is to get um, a vehicle. I'm out here mm -hmm. on the highway. There is not a bus in sight, and mm -hmm. so I would have to walk, um, I don't know, probably about um, two hours to get to where I have to go. Um, and my goal is to stay out of jail and not get, you know, I'm angry. So other than that, you know, I'm doing, I'm good. And you're doing okay with the drugs? Yes, mm -hmm. I am. Now, what was the turning point for you on your drug problem, if, if you're comfortable talking about that? Okay. Um, well, my uh, turning point was when um, I lost um, control and um, somebody had called a CPS on me. It CPS. Was, yeah, That's no names on that child. at all. Yeah, no, no yeah. names. Uh, this is Child Protective Services. Yes. Um, I had a date with him and I stood him up for the date. At that part, yes, I will unclaim mm -hmm. because I'm like, oh, yuck, you know, whatever. Um, he decided that, mm -hmm. that he wanted to go in and call a CPS on me and they, they, um, now, also, when I'm going through the court system and I have to go see my PO and my classes, they also, a CPS wants me to do all my UAs. All the other things. And do all yeah. the stuff. So they um, eventually, um, they had, a, um, they came in and took away my kids. Um, mm -hmm. Now, CPS, um, they had asked me, look, if you sign, you know, um, your children um, up now, you know, um, to CPS, you can have kids now, you know, and it's fine. I said, you know, you know I'm screw you guys. And so... Um, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So I fought, you know, um, the system, which I lost because again, it is all about money. Now they are with my um, hus my um, ex husband's uh, sister, mm -hmm. who they have now um, changed their names, mm -hmm. and um, um, they now call them mom, and um, you name it. Um, yeah. It's just all downhill. Okay. So uh, I 
I want to get back to what I asked you. And yeah. I, let me put it a different way here. Okay. Uh, for for the people that, that have no clue what goes on in the world, and, and they, there's a, you know who you are, um, what do you need? Oh, okay, we can say, okay, well, okay, get off the drugs. Just say no. You know, it's not good for you, and uh, and you're going to get in trouble and all of this. And I have no clue what's involved from, that's why I asked you, what's involved from your angle. What do you need from the community for you to, what what do you need from the community to help you along other than the car? I mean, is it emotional? Is it, is it what do you need from people? Well, um, and that... Um, I don't know if I asked this right, well, but I know what I mean. In that um, aspect, um, I'd have to say <coughs> nothing um, from the community, and um, that is not to be um, harsh, but um, it is uh, your choice, and, um, you know, so mm -hmm. you um, you can make your life work out. And so um, I um, either chose to have a heart attack um, and be, you know, um, mentally messed up, which, um, which yes, um, it has affected me in some ways. Um, so, no, um, I said, hey, you know what, um, and not only that, but my sister, uh, she is, I mean, just, I mean, um, terrible. She has a stole from the family, and um, I, I do not want to be like her nor anybody else. Mm -hmm. And um, it's sad because um, it, 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 it is not, um, it is not uh, um, addiction. It is a sickness. Mm -hmm. um, either you have that drug, or you know, or you go insane. You know, trying to, you know, uh, you know, get back your children or fix your life. Cause, you know, you can't. So uh, basically, um. I'm doing good. Yeah, softly. Okay. Well, I'm very proud of you there. Um, in, in, in my travels, I find that sometimes when people, whether it's a drug addiction, alcoholism, or anything, when we try to offer people something of equal or higher value, it, it works pretty good. But if you have nothing to give in exchange, it's like, uh, just like you said, from the time you busted that window, uh, it's been crap, crap, crap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you give up. Yeah, because um, who wants to change? You know, I'm um, using drugs yeah. or you know, doing um, what you have been doing because you know, um, you know that that um, you know that um, that that you're safe and um, it is a pattern. So you know, who wants to go and you know go to rehab and get clean and you know I have to change when you're fine. You know, you, you know just how you are. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to understand that. So what do you think about uh, when the people in Hollywood, they have an infraction, it's, it's, it's called an infraction rather than a crime in their case, <laughs> and they say, oh, well, I just go to rehab. What do you think of that? Well, um, I, I um, believe that it is a cop-out, and again, um, it has to do with money. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss, but it's called um, Money Talks and Bullshit Walks. Yeah, we can so, say that word. Yes, yeah. so um, Money Talks. Yeah. And so um, that and um, that that was my goal um, at first when yeah. I was in jail because um, people here um, that are out here on the streets we all know that if you go into inpatient you get out of jail you know, like you know you know um, that's your card. Why oh. is that? Oh, I see. So, so when I assume that they put they put drug users in jail rather than in rehab, I was wrong. Yes. Okay, I was wrong. Hmm. They put us in jail and uh, normally for uh, busting out windows or um, stealing mm -hmm. or uh, something like that and then you get in the system but you have to have a drug problem to go into rehab. Now say that you go and you bust out a window and you do not have no uh, drug problem, you will sit out your time and you, you will suffer. Up, you sit out the time, yeah. Now, now the word possession, uh, it, it, means, uh, it, it means that you have some drugs on you, right? Yes. Okay. So if you possess it, you're using, right? And no, 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 that's not true. Okay. <coughs> so that's not true either. Oh, what do I know? Here, we're learning something together here. Uh, and and you, 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 how old are you said? I am 26 years old. 26. Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? it's too far. Let's say five years from now. Um, I don't even know where I'm going to be tomorrow, let alone in five years. It's that, but yeah. One day at a time. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I used to have a um, a brand new um, Jeep. It was Eddie Bauer. It was yeah. in my name. I had my kids. I was uh, married. Um, um, I was, you know, normal. Um, mm -hmm. 
I now am down to um, two tubs of, you know, stuff. Oh, you know, two that, tubs, yes. yeah. Yeah, two, you know, uh, two of those uh, tubs, you know, other than that I own, so. Is it, and do, do you have family support? No. no. My my own grandma, um, she is I'm still, um, to this day, I'm seeing my children. She's, mm -hmm. She is, is allowed to go to their games mm -hmm. and then to baseball games, and so um, she chose to either um, help me in court or be able to see them, and that was a good choice because good choice. you know um, she can still be um, involved in their lives. Yeah, but look at the pressure that puts on the families to make it. Well, you have to make a choice like that. Yes, um, I um, I um, I can I say you know um that and that I'm not mad about that, but I am because um my motto is you know a family is a family, and you know how she should, you know, stick by my side. But then I calmed down, you know, and then I understood that um, um, somebody has to be on the inside, you know, yeah. because um, she knows stuff, you know, that has happened, you know, that I don't. So it's a good... <coughs> it, it, it's, it's like, just sitting here thinking about it, it's just, a, it's just like a whirlwind. It just yeah. can't get out of it. No. But you're out, you're out of the system for the moment, right? Yes, I am. And it took you how many years? It um, it took me about um three years to get um, out of the system, and uh, there was times where um, where where I was you know one hundred percent clean and um, no matter what I you know um um he thought or she thought I mean you know I mean I was doing good. Then I then I would get um um cough my PO you know a surprise, even though we already had you know um one appointment I set up for that week and come in. I can't be there, you know, in 15 minutes. I had no car, so I'm stuck there. Okay. Now I'm going back to jail. Give me your personal opinion on the accuracy of the urine tests. I would say that they are about 100% correct. 100%? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Uh, it's just a, it's just a dilemma, and it just does, just doesn't affect young people either, does it? No. No. Yeah. No. <coughs> and uh, it, so, do, do you think? Well, I would almost think it would be harder on women because of the children, and you have to make a living. And yes, it is. Uh -huh. So, 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 what do, would you say in the defense of the man? Um. Well, um, this would be my opinion: is that um, men uh, they go off a of thought, um, women uh, they go off emotion. So. So we are more um, emotional, uh -huh. and, and um, it's not a bad thing, but, uh, you know, um, we will cry about um, our husbands, you know, maybe cheating on us, you know, while we're in jail, or the kids, you know, and this and that. And now um, the, um, the man is going to say, hey, you know what, I am going to, you know, do my time, and I'm going to get out and do what I have to do. You know, mm -hmm. we will, you know, cry about it and make a big deal. Uh -huh. So. Yeah, but there is, you know, there is so many... There is, uh, actually, I was on the road one time, and I'm not going to identify the little town I was in. Um, and I was waiting for somebody, and uh, uh, they arrested a woman, I don't know what for. And I'm just standing there, and the officer says to me, he said, uh, he said, do you, know, do you know them? They were three little kids. And I said, no, why? And he said, well, somebody has to take care of these kids. Oh, now, man. think of the idiocy of this. Um, People call CPS when you either don't have enough money to feed your children or your washing machine breaks down or your toilet is clogged up and they take your children from you. And here is a police officer that grabbed the nearest stranger on the street say, here, you want three kids? Because this woman has to go to jail now. Now, um, we can talk about me. My thing was that... Um, Loud. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had my, my two children, mm -hmm. which I had um, raised them. Um, for five years, I mean, by myself, they were undressed, I'm, I'm, I'm wealthy, never ever beaten. Um, I did not have a chance in the world to get back my children because it is um, it is all about money. But because um, the people that have them now had a half a million dollar home and uh, five trucks oh, you and was, money. You was SOL from the get yep. oh, so, wow. so now they uh -huh. have my children, but now I do know um, it's a family of um, um, two. They had a meth lab in their home. Okay, the children were in the home. She went to jail and did her time and got out and still got back her children. 
I had I have no uh, charges. I'm on my record except for a breaking out a window. No, uh, no uh, drug charges. No nothing. Mm -hmm. Only for my windows. And I and which now I lose my children. Okay. Now you don't have to answer that if you don't want to. But what was your drug of choice? Methamphetamine. Methamphetamine. Can you explain that to me? Uh, can can you explain to me uh, what's involved when uh, I hear it's highly addictive? Yes, it is. Um, and my opinion is that um, it was brought in here um, by the government because now, um, why why is it getting um, crossed our borders? We could stop that. No, it is. I mean, it is this. Yeah, methamphetamine is the highest. Um, use in um, Washington State, not weed. It's a methamphetamine. And if you notice, uh, for the people that um, that are um, on the methamphetamine, they they come from a very very low um, um, income. So here again, it's money and availability. What you say? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And from what I understand, it's very very hard to uh, you know to to break a amphetamine. Yes, it is because um, of the simple fact that if you have methamphetamines, you can always, you know, um, go, 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 mm -hmm. and you do not have to stop and think about, you know, um, your children or um, getting your house, mm -hmm. you know, fixed up or um, doing mm -hmm. what you have to get done. Now, again, though, that is a um, choice to do it or not do it, you know, and um, I believe that if you really want to quit, that you can, but, you know, that's up to you. Well, that's a... But it's a boy. That's a heavy subject. I'm kind of lost for words here, because I thought it was going to be simple. Remember when we started? Because there's so many angles of this whole. There is. It's just so 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 many angles, and, and, and so now all this in this whole thing also prevents you from getting have a decent job. Am I yes, right? it does. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, we have no welfare system per se, do we? Yes, we do. Uh, for how long? Um. That, that I do not know, but I, um, I do know that if you have a children, they will give you um, a food stamps, and then they also will give you, you know, uh, some cash. Now again, we are talking again about the system. Mm -hmm. Now they will have you um, come into the office, you mm -hmm. know, and see them, or, or they are famous for sending you the papers to do, you know, um, like a monthly pay, pay, yeah. review. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? They don't ever come to your house, so. Somehow you lose all your benefits. Now your kids are hungry, and now you can't pay your rent because mm -hmm. you never ever got you know a piece of paper that came from the welfare office two that, blocks away yeah. from your home. Yeah, uh, I read something that, that the reason I had asked it like that is because so I didn't do my homework. This was of a sort of a spur of the moment thing. Um, from what I understand, but I read in the paper that uh, they had taken. Um, I think it's a welfare thing in place per se and you can only be there so long and then they had put uh, again violation whatever over 1200 families away and then our governor Christine Gregoire put the majority of people back on but something like that is short term is that right? Yes um, I believe it is um, two years but it also may be five and now that, and what do you do after that? Now but that is for um, that is for for a lifetime so say that you go on there for yeah. six months okay and then you go off of it and then you go back on for a year that is all I'm added up you you get five years for a whole a, a lifetime. Whole lifetime and then after that you're on your own then that's why we have people that go into homes and steal and rob yeah. and again a viewers please um, um, it is not okay to steal and rob anybody but that is what it comes down to that's because right. you have to eat yeah yeah <laughs> wow it's very very sad that's a, yeah, I, I, I guess it is. Uh, we have an ordinance now downtown Olympia. People can't panhandle. Um, about four or five years ago, I took it downtown. We talked to the homeless people. Actually, we did four shows on homelessness, and a copy that went to, um, at the time, Gary Luck, our governor. And so we could show them what we do with the money, you know, that TCTV uh, spends for us to use the equipment. And as you can tell, we're at my house again, but like I said, this was a spare the moment type thing, and because um, I really appreciate when people um, just uh, with very controversial subjects come forward, you know. And we've done many prison shows, so but I've never looked at it from from that angle. Um, 
Yeah, I have nothing to lose, you know, by doing this show. I mean, mm -hmm. because, well, for one, I don't have anything, you know, I mean, period. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the truth, it does need to be out there. That, yeah. you know, that the sh it just, it, it, yeah. it is how it goes. Yeah. I, I just wrote a newsletter, and I used to work draconian. And draconian means unusual cruelty uh, in whether war, peace, or, or in between. And one of the, um, the, the sample quotes are from Draco, he was a 7th century, um, oh, I can't say that word, he was from Athenian, there it is, Athenian uh, ruler. And, uh, and once people got in, either indebted to him or they got hung up in the system, um, it was fixed that uh, you just couldn't get out of it. And he, so whether it was war uh, in Traconian or it was peace in Traconian, no matter what you did, he was just... Um, very, very uh, tra draconian, if you look it up in the dictionary. And uh, it, it might not appear like it, because we don't see the little people. What, what I mean by little people, uh, we deal with the big criminals, uh, you know, the, the, the car chases and the shootings and stuff. So the average person has no clue about what you just told us. No. I didn't, you know. so. Um, so, what would you like to relate to um, to the viewers? Uh, your, your own personal thought, what would you like to leave them with? Um, my whole... And, and loud. Okay, my um, thing, um, what I tell you is, um, before you see, you know, um, maybe um, like a bum on the street, or someone like me, um, who is a drug user, or an um, ex-drug user, you know, you need to... Um, I stop and think that you know they um, they have feelings and um, like um, say that um, say that I was uh, using drugs and I need help you know by a counselor or something I I could not I mean, even go do that because I, I had no money to go and get help to get off drugs if I was on them you know that is what it takes so um just you know I stop and think that um that, that we we are not I'm um, we we did not you know want to get on drugs in the beginning, but that is what it came down to, you know. So um, all of us, you know, we do want help, and we and we um, we are still you know I'm kind and I'm helpful, and we're not you know I'm mean people. Um, we just got into a a bad spot, and we couldn't get out of it, and that's all. So. What he means to you. Oh. <laughs> uh? Basically, being feeling uh, like you can be somewhere without being afraid of being hurt. Uh, you know, everybody wants to feel safe. You know, because what's what's the use of being on, in the world when if you can't feel safe? I mean, safety is one of the main factors in this world. Well, it should be. It's not, but. For now, yeah. Um, have you have you felt that there was a time when you weren't safe? Oh yeah. The fact is, right here in the gazebo, I was uh, beat up. Yeah. And so, if it hadn't been for the cops, I would have been uh, basically beat to death. I would say that you weren't very safe then. No. So, do you want to talk about that? And explain about what happened. Well, it's not really something that's pleasant to talk about. Um, well, then let me ask you this: uh, Did your feelings of safety change after that? Well, yeah, you can say it to an extent, yeah, because. Uh, there for a while, I was afraid to even come into town because for fear of being beat up and stuff. Um, back then, for about three weeks, I would, had uh, just stayed at the tent that I live in and uh, didn't even come to town. I'd have people, I'd have people bring me back meals and stuff just because of the fact that I didn't want to get beat up again. And now I, <clears throat> now I carry a either a pocket knife on me or a knife at the tent, one or two, so, and have a club ready handy. So, yeah. Do you think that being safe is important to you? 
does it matter to you very, very much? much so i mean you know i don't want to go somewhere where i won't feel safe mm -hmm. and i can basically sometimes i can sense when things are going to happen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um like i've had a uh, girlfriend that her name's uh misty lee cooper and uh she had uh But, yeah, you know, it's, she was in trouble, and, because, uh, her parents, uh, made a mistake and, uh, thought that it was her fault, so they lectured her on that, and, uh, it's not a matter of being safe, but it's kind of a, emotional thing because it was like when your girlfriend gets in trouble with something that wasn't really her fault it kind of makes you feel bad you know uh, uh, i have a question for you um i want to get back to you being armed now now you keep in mind we're talking to people that can comprehend uh what it, it always have and always have some noisy day we talking uh, we addressing the people out there that can really comprehend what you go through. So when when you said you now carry a knife, um, other people could mistake that for you now being armed and dangerous. How would you like to respond to those people that now think that? Well, it's not really a regular knife. It's just like a Leatherman, and I use it for all t types of different oh. reasons. I. Mm -hmm. I like for example, I used a small flat blade screwdriver on it for the to take the back of this off, see what type of battery it took. And at the same time, I had to use the pliers too. And you know, so it's it's not necessarily just a fact of being armed and dangerous. Yeah. It's, it's not. I didn't really get it for that purpose. I got it for self protection, just like people get mace. Exactly. And I don't see, I, I only see using that as a very last resort. And even then, just wounding the person so that they'll leave, that you got time to get away from them. And then go and tell the police. I, I, don't, I don't believe in uh, being dangerous with weapons and stuff. I just don't believe that. Yeah. You mentioned that you live in an intent. Yeah. Um, I would imagine that in that sort of circumstance you are very vulnerable and that yeah. uh, a big safety issue is being in a position that you can protect yourself. Yeah. And, you know, especially at night, anybody can come in and do anything to you. I mean, they could stab you, shoot you, whatever, you know. And with some of the people in this town, it's very hard to to feel safe out in the woods without actually, uh, I don't know how to say it, but without self-protection, you can't really feel safe in the woods. Now, um, are there, are, do, you, do you find a lot of young people out here? Do you think that there's a lot of young people that oh, really yeah. shouldn't be out here? Yeah, I, I, as a matter of fact, I was uh, walking back to the tent yesterday and uh, saw a 10-year-old kid just walking around, no, no parents, no nothing, just walking around on his own. And I asked him where his parents was at, and he said, back at home, they don't care where I go. You know, and it's, it's very disappointing because uh, if it hadn't been, you know, it kind of reminds me of this cat, because if it hadn't been for my girlfriend and I, this cat would be abandoned right now. And he wouldn't have nobody to look to, to feed him or anything like that. Uh, it's very surprising at how people and animals are almost the same exact way. Because people, they can feed themselves. So can cats. Well, the thing is, is people are more self-dependent than cats. But I see cats as, you know, just another human being because they rely on you and yet you rely on the store to get get you your food. So therefore, I see it as kind of an equal uh, deal. 
You get a really good analysis. And so, well, gee, we thank you. You've been very informative. And one more question, how are we? That's a, a whole different set of, um, a whole different set of old in, in homelessness when we, we carried the homeless uh, part. Um, the, the young lady is sick today. There was one. She gave the example. She read a little pa passage. Oh, it's my brother from the Little Prince, where um, it showed. Be quiet. Yeah, where it showed. Hey, I'm doing it wrong. My new. Well, it's not new anymore, but there you go. Stop. Please stop. Um, where where it showed that once we tame something, we have to take care of it. Mm -hmm. So we cannot tame addicts, but once we tame or incarcerate people, we have to take care of them. And uh, I mean that applies to animal shelters. And uh, you know we just warehousing people for for small infractions. So the next time, next time um, you hear something like that, you might wanna remember Jaina here. Uh, you think you gonna stay clean? That that was not a fair question. So you don't have to answer that if you don't want to. Um, that um, that is um, hard to say because um, I don't know, you know, what um, what what will happen tomorrow. But I'm um, also um, I wanted to um, comment on on the whole attaining, you know, a drug addicts. That is impossible because the government is allowing it to come here. Now, once the government uh, stops that, mm -hmm. then we cannot, you know, uh, use drugs. But they are allowing it to because without us, they don't have the gels. They don't have no money. They have nothing zilch. So they need us addicts here. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm at the end of the show here, but get, uh, if if you you might be interested in that, that there was an investigation by Maxine Waters uh, from California and some other people when they they finally uh, opened up some cases in reference to the Black Panthers, and it it showed that um, you it, you can read that you can read that yourself that eventually. Um, it's all this sounds. She's right. It was when, when they outlawed the Black Panthers, the streets were flooded with drugs by other people. And now, true story. Yes. And not only that, but um, <coughs> now, when you uh, stop using meth, um, uh, methamphetamines, you will lose every single solitary friend. I sit I'm in my home, 24 hours a day with me and my dog. Mm -hmm. I have no friends because you have to pick. That are your friends. So, so when you quit, it, um, it, it is not because, you know, um, um, it is not because, you know, um, it's not around. It's because you pick um, either your buddies or, you know, whatever. So mm -hmm. you, you have to literally, I mean, drop anybody and, 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 and you know, I mean, everybody who does methamphetamines. So now, I mean, I hang out with nobody, and you know that. Yeah. I mean, I have no friends at all. It puts another spin on it. So, so show a little compassion if we can. And uh, I really appreciate you doing it. Okay, I'll be your friend. No? You can be okay. We really appreciate uh, Gina doing it for us today. And uh, we'll go back to no brainers uh, next week because this is really something about, you know. we we'll see you next week. Bye. This is Randy, working on the new version of Lillian Miss Lillian.
It's part of why I plan it Thank you.